Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. In this episode, I'm taking a look at Monster Slaughter by Henri Pim, published by Ankama Games. And this is a game for two to five players, which is based on those uh, pulp 80s horror movies in which, you know, teenagers go to a cabin in the woods and they get attacked by all sorts of monsters. And this is a play on that, except in this game, everybody is a family of monsters trying to kill all those uh, party goers in that cabin in the woods. It's, uh, it's got very cool artwork, it's got miniatures, and the box is actually a part of the game board. So let's open up the box and see what's inside. I'll set up the game and explain the rules, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, Monster Slaughter by Ankama is a very, very huge box. And it's pretty heavy as well. And it has on the back the playing field laid out with all of the miniatures depicted. So the setup of the game is clear here. It has some text on it. So let's open it up. Okay, so this is actually a leaflet because they're probably using the same box for different languages. And then they put one of the appropriate language on the back so the back of the box doesn't really have this, but that works. Okay, so let's open up the box. Okay, so inside, actually, <laughs> you can see that the bottom of the box is only this high because it's used in the game itself, and this makes up the most of the box. So here you go, you have the, um, the cabin in the woods, basically, the house that the monsters will be attacking. So let's put that to the side for now. And then here is the cardboard box, Monster Slaughter with all the stuff in it. So let's open that up carefully, it's a bit tight. So let's see. Okay, so let's see how this is supposed to be. So this all goes here and this goes here. So that's just fine. That has an indentation here in the plastic to keep those pieces because this is going to be the game board surrounding that board that we saw. And these are doubles, so you flip them open and you connect them like uh, puzzle pieces. So I'll put those to the side for now. Let's see, is this taped as well? Yes, it is. So I'm just going to take that out of the box. I'll look at that later. So here on the bottom are the scenarios and the rule book, as you can see. And the rule book has lots of illustrations to show you how to play the game. So that's very handy. And some scenarios that you can play. All right. Okay, so here is another board where you can put cards. There's uh, two sheets of very brightly colored, cool looking tokens with all these characters here, these survivors, uh, all lots of them. And they are double-sided with uh, icons on the back. And here's another one with all these brains and meat <laughs> and what have you, biohazard. So that look, looks very nice and thematic. Okay, so let's get that box out of the way. Okay, so then we have this again. I'll just cut open the Oh, the tape, I think I can just pull that off, like that. Okay, there we go. So another piece of paper. So they did their best to keep everything in place during transport, which is commendable. And I'm just gonna cut this loose to speed it up a bit. There. Okay, so miniatures, nice and brightly colored. So we got all these cool uh, miniatures. So these are all the survivors. 
all the different ones. So let's look at the detail. So here's the jock. And it's, it's nice. It has a cartoony uh, feel and look to it. It's a uh, pretty light plastic, but it's, you know, it's okay. The, the detail is there that needs to be on the model to at least match the artwork for it. So this is not your, you know, super highly, extremely detailed um, tabletop war game miniatures, but they are detailed enough. I mean, uh, this is pretty cool, actually to match um, the artwork and the art style of this game. Uh, for example, this one is a bigger one, and you can see that it has plenty of detail here. So it's kind of like on par with games like, I don't know, Zombie Side. Even This is a harder kind of plastic, which I like, because sometimes miniatures are a bit bendy and soft, and these are a bit harder which I imagine can make it, you know, durable, more durable. Here is an alien. Pretty funny as well. So it has that classic, I don't know, cartoony look and feel to it, which I like. So plenty of miniatures. I'm not going to show them all. There's a bag of dice. And they are green and white. Tightly packed in this plastic. There you go. So let's have a look at those engraved dice, as you can see, with these symbols on them, four fists, an X, another X on the white ones. And the green ones have also two X's and four fists, but these are the, the bad guys, obviously, you know, the, the monsters. So I guess they're all the same, yeah, pretty much. Okay. So those go there. We have a pack of these uh, doors that go into your uh, walls. And the doors can be opened or closed and they are in fact folded. So they go on, yeah, there, there's a bit of cardboard in between there. So you can put them over uh, pieces where they, they can fit like, like that, for example. So, you know, you can put them on and take them off. So that's pretty cool. It's a, it's a clever mechanism. And there's, of course, oh, there's some cubes here as well in eight different colors for all the different uh, monsters. And there are cards. So two packs of cards. We've got these cards and these cards. All right, I'm not going to show all of that to you. Let's uh, set up a game. To set up Monster Slaughter, you take out the bottom of the game box and you put it in the middle of the table and you take these wall pieces and you put together the rooms of the cabin. You also take four of these game boards and you put them together around the cabin. And there are several door pieces that you put over these breaks in the walls and these are all the doors in the cabin. Next, you take the five guest miniatures and their corresponding cards and tiles. You place their tiles on the first five spots of this board here. You check their colors and their cards and you see how many health points they have. And then you put their corresponding colored cubes on that many health points on this health track. So for example, the red character here has three health points, so his cube goes over there. These cubes go there and there, and this person is on the yellow cube, has four health. He goes over there. And finally, you take five of these uh, bone tokens and you put them on the first spot. And these are worth two points each. Each player then takes five of these victim markers corresponding to the invited party guests and one target token. Then you use these tokens to secretly determine the order in which you think these victims are going to die and you flip them over so nobody knows your order and you take the target marker and you place it on one of the victims that you think you are going to kill. Next you take the nocturnal event cards and you set the knock knock and the out of here card aside and you take the other ones you give them a shuffle and you put that 
on the board in the appropriate spot. If this is your first game, you can leave out the Knock Knock card, otherwise you take the top three cards of the Nocturnal Event deck and you shuffle the Knock Knock card in there somewhere and you place it back on top of the deck and next you take the Full Moon marker and place it on top of that deck. Then each player selects one of the monster families and their corresponding cards and takes those miniatures in front of themselves. Next you're going to prepare the game deck. And to do that you will need the object cards corresponding to the monster families that the players chose. For example, the golems, the werewolves and the maniacs. You also take 7 random bonus action cards from this deck and the three trap cards indicated with the trap icon. If you're also playing with the Toolshed expansion, you take five of these neutral cards, leaving out the medkit and the flare gun, and you shuffle those five and form a separate stack next to the Toolshed. If you're feeling confident, you can also use the medkit and the flare gun, which will either heal a character or call in a surprise visitor. Once you've selected all those cards, you shuffle them together and form a big stack. And then you take that stack of cards and you distribute them among these room spots according to the table in the rule book. Notice that this is also indicated on the board itself. So in a five player game, the toilet would have three cards. In a four player game, it would have two cards. Three player game, one card. And in a two player game, there would be no cards here. And each room has this printed on the board. Then you take the five party guest cards, you give them a shuffle and you randomly place one card on top of each of the room decks. If you're also using the Toolshed expansion, you take the Toolshed board and place it next to these cards on the corner of the board with its own draw pile. The game board also has a dedicated discard pile spot. And finally, you place all the brain and the meat tokens within easy reach of the players, as well as the dice. After you've done all of that, you randomly determine a first player, and then you're ready to start the game. Players take their turns in clockwise order, starting with the first player, who selects one of their three monsters and places it in one of the four outside zones adjacent to one of the building's four sides and then they can complete that monster's actions. After completing the monster's actions, that player takes the corresponding card and flips it over. The player to the left then does likewise and so on until all players have played their first monster. After that, the first player takes the full moon marker and places at midnight and reveals the first nocturnal event card and reads it aloud. That is now a event that will stay in play during the entire round. Next, the first player then plays one of their two remaining monsters, flips over the corresponding card after taking the actions, and after all the players have done the same, the first player places the full moon marker one hour ahead, discards the previous event, and flips over a new one, reading it out and applying it for the next of the round. The previous midnight event card is no longer in effect. After every player has taken their third turn, the clock turns 2 o'clock. It's a red number indicating that all players can then flip over all three of their cards and start a new round. The game continues until the final round at 8 p.m. If at that point any survivors are still alive, then the players play one final round like the 2 a.m. round with the monsters of their choice. All monster cards have several icons on them. First, in the top corner, there's the monster's family icon. These are the werewolves. Second, there is the number of actions a monster can take, the number of dice the monsters can use for those actions, and each monster family has special abilities which are different for all monster families. The six actions you can take are move, peek, smash, search, scare, and attack. Some of these need these action dice to succeed. Moving and peeking are free and do not require dice to be rolled. Smashing a door requires one success to be rolled. Searching, scaring and attacking will be more effective the more successes are rolled. And each die has four successes and two failures. 
Let's talk about the actions monsters can take. In addition to the monster's regular actions and special abilities, each monster has one free move that does not count towards its actions, and as many bonus actions from the active player's hand as the active player wishes to use. You may perform all these possible actions in any order during the active player's turn. The game has nine zones, four outside zones and five inside the cabin, and each monster can use one of its actions to move to a zone adjacent to its position. For example, this guy can walk from this outside zone to this one. Within the cabin, moves are only possible if the door between the two zones has been smashed and no barricade blocks the way. For example, this guy could move from this room to this room through the smashed door. Another action monsters can take is peek. To do so, the monster must be either inside the room or in an adjacent zone that has a door connecting to that room. When you peek, you take the top card from the pile for that room and look at it discreetly. So for example, if this monster wants to peek into this room, there is a door here, and this is the living room, and they would take the top card of that deck, look at it, and of course the first card during the first round will always be a survivor, and then they put it back. So now they know which survivor is hiding in this room. Then you return that card on top of the deck without shuffling. Monsters cannot move through a door unless they smash it. To do so, they need to be in the zone with the door they want to smash. So for example, this monster in the living room could smash any of these doors. That monster takes the number of action dice available to them and rolls them. A door is smashed if at least one success is rolled. Once the door has been smashed, it stays open unless a barricade is placed over the doorway and players keep this door because it is worth a point at the end of the game. If a monster wants to destroy a barricaded door, they need to roll at least two successes and they are worth zero points. Every time a door to a room is smashed, you take the appropriate deck belonging to that room and you shuffle it and you place it back on the stack. A monster can also do a search action and for that the monster must be inside the room it wants to search and it rolls a number of action dice available to it. So for example, if the maniac child wants to search, it has two dice, he rolls them and for each success you draw a card from the appropriate room's deck. Any object card or bonus action card they find, they simply take into their hand and if a victim card is found, you take that miniature and place it into the room. If the search was not finished, then you just continue drawing cards. If a trap card is drawn, you immediately read it and apply its effect. All cards must be drawn one by one, and whenever a player's hand reaches seven cards, the player can no longer draw cards and the search ends. Another action players can take is to scare the victims. To do so, the victim must be visible, and the monster must be in the same zone or in a zone adjacent to the room that the victim is in, whether or not there is a door. Scaring victims allows players to move and or hide visible victims. The player's monster rolls a number of action dice available to it, and the victim miniature must be moved by up to as many zones as success is rolled by the monster. The scared victim may end their move in any zone other than the one containing the monster that scared them. Scared victims can open doors but not barricades and always close intact doors behind them. Victims cannot leave the cabin except to go to the tool shed. Whenever a scared victim is moved into a room without monsters, it hides immediately. You take the character's card and the deck belonging to that room and you shuffle in that card and place it back on its spot and then you take the miniature and put it back on its token. Whenever a monster enters a room without smashing a door, the victims do not hide. Whenever a player is in a zone with a victim miniature, they can use an attack action. Before the active player rolls the dice, they must ask the other players if anyone wants to defend the attended victim. And then other players may intervene by helping the intended victim fight back. Any player who wants to delay a victim's death can try to give him or her one object card with which to fight back 
as if they were playing for the victim. Players may consult each other before deciding to fight back. If several players want to defend a victim, these players must show each other the cards they plan to use without showing them to the active player and decide together which card to use. The item used to defend a victim must be an object card found during earlier searches by the player defending the victim. Objects are used only once and are discarded after they have been used. These cards provide extra action dice that are combined with the victim's special ability, which I will explain in a bit. In addition, most object cards give one extra dice against certain type of monsters. In this case, because this is a weapon that is especially effective against golems, they roll an extra die. The attacking player and the defending party check how many dice they get to roll, and they roll them simultaneously. After rolling the dice, there can be three outcomes. First, you check the victim's special ability. In this case, the cheerleader cancels out one success. Then victim successes cancel out monster successes. And for any remaining successes, that victim takes that many damage. If the outcome is a tie, nothing happens. But if there are more victim successes than monster successes, the monster is ejected from the zone. From the toilet, a monster is ejected into the living room. From any other room, the monster is ejected out of the cabin through the door. If that door happened to be closed, then the monster smashes the door as it goes through it, but does not earn the point for smashing that door. The door is simply set aside. Whenever a victim takes damage, you move that victim's colored cube that many points down the track, and the attacking monster gains as many flesh tokens as it did damage. If the victim is killed, then the monster receives any damage dealt plus one of these bone tokens, which is also worth two points. And the victim is removed from the game. Whenever a party guest dies, so not a surprise visitor, each player reveals their victim marker for the dead party guest. If the party guest died in the order they had predicted, each player who had the right death order receives one brain token. So if this was the first victim to die, that player gets a brain token, which is worth three points at the end of the game. If the party guest that died was that monster's favorite meal, you take that marker, you flip it over, and if it had this uh, favorite meal marker on it, you also take this token, which is worth five points at the end of the game. The game ends when either all victims are dead or it turns 8 a.m. and all the monsters have taken one final turn. And at that point you count your victory points. Each flesh token is worth two points, each brain token is worth three points, each fatal blow token is worth two points, and if you had the correct marker on your favorite meal, then that's worth five points, and every door you smashed is worth one point. In case of a tie, the player with the most brain token wins. And if there's still a tie, you can refer to the rulebook for several tiebreakers. As mentioned before, all the monsters have their own special abilities, so I'll mention them briefly here. The aliens have one free smash action per turn where they can smash doors. The golems have one extra action die when attacking. The maniacs automatically injure victims one hit point. The mummies have one free scare action per turn. The vampires have plus one action die when searching. The werewolves have two free moves instead of just the standard one. And the zombies have two successes needed to eject zombies after a failed attack. And the victims also have their own special abilities. So you've got the cheerleader Brittany who has tenacious and she cancels out one of the monster's successes. Cam is the stoner and he rolls one die plus any reaction dice from a player, so he always gets an extra die. Laika is the smart girl and she can re-roll one of her failures. Tom is inventive and has one automatic success. And Bob is the strong jock who will always eject his opponent after an attack, provided he's still alive. And in addition, there are five surprise visitors who all have their own special abilities, which I will let you discover on your own. 
So it's time for my final thoughts on Monster Slaughter by Ankama. Well, let me start by saying the game looks absolutely beautiful. You've got great looking miniatures, very detailed, and there's plenty of them. Uh, the artwork is magnificent. I really like the uh, horror comic uh, style that the game has. Um, I like the fact that you're using the box as the actual cabin. Uh, so that is all very, very positive. It's really an eye catcher. It's a simple game. Uh, it's easy to learn and to teach. Uh, it plays quick. It plays in about 50 minutes to half an hour, depending on the number of players. It's a dice chucking game. So, you know, there's a little bit of strategy in that you need to decide which actions to take. And then there's, of course, a lot of luck when you're attacking and other players can, you know, make it harder for you by playing those cards, which is also a lot of fun. There's a lot of take that in here. So that is fun. It's lighthearted. So uh, that is the type of game that it is. It's not anything highly strategic or difficult. The production value is also very good. I mean, the, the quality of the miniatures is very high. The cardboard is sturdy enough. There's one minor thing, and that's that these doors are pretty tight. They're basically folded cardboard with a bit of cardboard in the middle. So, you know, if you put them on and take them off many times, they might come loose. And you also have to be careful with the uh, paper artwork on the outside of the cardboard of the board because you might fold that uh, if you're not careful. So take care using the doors. Uh, otherwise, you know, the quality is very good. The cardboard is thick. The cards are of a good, uh, decent quality and uh, they're clear. The icons on them are very clear. They're easy to understand. They're very intuitive. The tokens are fine as well. And there is also a scenario booklet, which is pretty cool. So after you've played the basic game a couple of times, and maybe you've added the shed expansion as well, which is in there, then the scenario brings you eight difficult, uh, more difficult scenarios, uh, starting with an easy one, and it gets continuously more uh, difficult or challenging as you go. And they add certain uh, scenarios, certain things that you need to overcome stuff that happens that's different from the base game. And you get lots of tokens here that you can use in those scenarios to indicate whatever's going on. So that's a nice touch. And there uh, is also a community forum at the Ankama website where people can uh, enter their own scenarios that they make up. So that's also a good and a nice touch. The only negative thing I can think of uh, of this game is the setup and the breakdown of the game because setting up the game takes a bit of time. You need to put down the board. You need to make your cabin with all the walls and everything. And especially the cars, there's plenty of cars, but there's a lot of different ones and you need to sort them out first because you only take the item cards matching the monsters that have been selected uh, for playing. And then you need to take out five of those uh, extra action cards and there's booby traps and there's the shed cards that you may or may not want to use. So there's a lot of extra things that you need to set up and, and, you know, making those decks before you can actually start playing. So there's that. But other than that, uh, it is a very fun game and it's, it's light and it's quick. So, you know, you, you do have some setup, but the game plays quickly enough. Uh, and, and after that, you just, you know, you sort out the cards again and you, you go again. You just uh, replay it. You, you, this is the kind of game you want to be playing a couple of times probably on a, on a gaming night because it plays pretty quickly. So uh, that's uh, Monster Slaughter by Inkama. I really enjoyed playing this. Uh, I'm giving this uh, two thumbs up. And there is also going to be an expansion for uh, Monster Slaughter soon on Kickstarter. So I will put a link in the description below this video if you're watching on YouTube. So you can go and check that out as well. Uh, you can get the expansion. Maybe you can even get the base game with that as well. So go and check that out. And that was uh, Monster Slaughter by Ankama. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven. Mm -hmm.